What's going on? I'm Larry Hoover Jr. and I'm rocking with Street Certified News. Oh, it is your boy Kiss, man. Shout out to Street Certified News. Yo, it's your boy El Hitter, Mr. Oh, yeah, y'all already know what it is, man. I'm rocking with Street Certified News. We got behind the scenes, man. We're gonna tie this bitch up. You already know the vibes. We actually in the building. Street Certified. Street outside the gym. Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Emrex El Guapo, man. Street Certified News. And we back with another one. So today's story, man, is actually a story that I seen it pop up a couple weeks ago. And I, I, I wanted to make a story about it, but it, it really wasn't making sense to me. So, you know, I looked into it. I did some research. I made some calls, man. Shout out to, you know what I'm saying, my people in the A. But um, we're going to do a story today about YFN Lucci. We do want to start off by saying R.I.P. Uh, to the to, to the man who who was killed uh in december of 2020 um that actually is what springboarded the case but then you know that's what we thought when we looked into it this is actually something that's been going on for a while and that situation really helped them solidify what they was doing and that's really what you know got wife and lucy caught up in the whole situation Around 5.20 p.m., uh, this was December 10th, 2020, uh, police in Atlanta responded to a shooting. Um, they were met with a man laying in the street, suffering from gunshot wounds. Like I said, RIP to him, uh, James Adams. He was 28 at the time. Um, and at the time, they was just investigated as, hey, I'm, you know, we heard shots. We show up. You know, we got a murder victim. You know, maybe not quite an hour, but a little bit later, another guy named Kevin Wright, who 32, he showed up to a, a, a firehouse, like a fire station, and he had gunshot wounds. He ended up surviving. You know, they call the police. The police show up. They connect these two shootings. They talk to Kevin Wright, and pretty soon, three people's names pop up as, you know, potential uh people that was involved in this murder slash shooting the first guy was a guy named uh rayvon boy uh, at the time he was 23 um it was a leroy pitts a a 17 and then it was rayshawn bennett age 29 a uh, aka wife and lucy so the guy kevin wright claimed that um pitts and boyd were the shooters but that um wife and lucy you know they hopped out of his vehicle uh and wife and lucy was the getaway driver of the whole thing when it happened man when this shit first happened people was kind of thrown off by it like hold on wife and lucy was the getaway driver and a drive-by murder like what the fuck it didn't make a lot of sense um come to find out uh well we'll, we'll give that well hold on we'll get to that so wife and lucy he turns himself in and the other two gentlemen were eventually located in, in Miami, Florida. So they caught them dudes down in Miami. They brought them back up. YFN, he turns himself in and he gets a bond. Must go by. In May of 2021, YFN Lucci, uh, after, you know, he got a bond, he told the judge, hey, I'm going to abide by the, I guess, whatever the terms of his bond was. Um, and he had the bond for the murder. In 2020, May of 2020, um, the state of Georgia orders wife and Lucci back to jail. Um, and they're telling them that he has a new case pending. Shout out to 11 Alive News. Um, I'm gonna have all the links for y'all in the description, man. Shout out 11 Alive News. Uh, we're gonna show y'all, we're gonna throw it up, we're gonna show y'all a, a, a snippet of the article that they wrote, really laying down, you know, what was going on when wife and Lucci was charged. On Monday, May 5th, the Fulton County District Attorney's Office dropped a 75-page, 105-count indictment accusing the group of racketeering, which was unusual for a non-fed case. It says the indictment ranges from murder all the way down to possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Um, the December 2020 murder of James Adams was also conveniently wrapped up inside this RICO indictment. Basically, the first charge that YFN Lucci got off the murder, that they now put that charge in this RICO case, and then they connect him to these individuals so then they can bring the murder in. They can say, oh, they were selling drugs. They did this murder. 
they can wrap it all up and make it look like, you know, a, a gang. And this is what a gang does. The indictment alleges that each of the 12 people charged is associated with the subgroups of the National Bloods gang. It says that they had connections and relationships to each other and accuses them of committing a wide variety of crimes to protect and enhance the gang's reputation and to gain and maintain control of territory. So that was that was important because in May, when the prosecutor in the state basically ordered YFN Lucci back to jail, um, he said, why? And they said, well, hey, look, we got you connected to this blood gang in Atlanta. And they really call it YFN, you know, dude named YFN Lucci. They saying YFN is the faction of the Bloods in Atlanta. So it was this group called YFN. You was part of it. They all in this Rico case. So now you violated your bond by getting a new case, which is funny because the case that he got is in the new case. So it's all the same shit. So they gave him a little case. Then they gave him a bond for that. Then they gave him the big case. They got the little case inside of it. And say you violated your bond by catching a new case, which is kind of crazy to me, but that's what the state of Georgia did. Um, and because he was associated with these Atlanta Bloods and these Miami Bloods, they wrapped him up into the indictment. So the indictment shows that um, the state of Georgia have been investigating this section of the Bloods as far back as 2010. And, and conveniently, they only were able to connect wife and Lucci in February of 2020 when he shot a music video entitled Shine On where they say he had um, gang paraphernalia and he had language in his bars that was gang related and I think even some of the gentlemen on the indictment were in the video so that was the very first time they were able to connect wife and Lucci to this set of the bloods who they've been investigating for 10 years without an indictment the only other connection between yfn lucci and this group of people that they're trying to connect yfn lucci to was the shooting of james adams and kevin wright of uh, in december 2020 and like i said that is you know that's basically based on the witness statement um i don't i you know man rp we don't want nobody getting shot you know what I'm saying? We don't want nobody dying. But at the same time, you hold a man in jail for murder and racketeering basically based off of a music video and a guy saying, hey, he was in the car that day. In 2019, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation reported that there were over 70,000 known and confirmed gang members in the state of Georgia. Uh, at that time in 2019, they formed this Georgia Gang Task Force. Um, whose job was to investigate and prosecute uh, the groups or individuals or whole organizations that had to do with these 70,000 gang members. Um, that's important because not to bring up any other gangs in Georgia. I don't know who's in Georgia. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never lived in Georgia. But I'm pretty sure there's other gangs in Georgia, other active gangs. I'm sure there's other crimes that are associated with gangs in Georgia. I thought it was very convenient that the state of Georgia used the Bloods, you know, this national, they, and they even put in their press release, this national gang name with a brand and everybody know their colors. And it's almost easier to say, well, look, we're this brand new group. We think it's a whole bunch of gang members in our state. We're the gang task force. Who are the, what's the first gang we going after? We going after the Bloods. Um, and then also, to connect that to a famous rapper makes it like even a bigger case to them. Just by looking at the facts, like I said, you know, street certified news, we had to look at the facts. You know what I'm saying? We gonna get y'all government documents, you know, confirm news articles. We gonna get y'all stuff like that to base our opinion on, you see what I mean? But um, based on those facts, it seems that the state of Georgia, you know, with the influx of all of these new people from do new cities, they felt like they had a gang problem. They started a gang task force. And then they first people they went for was the Bloods. Well, man, the Bloods in Atlanta, who are they related to? We don't know. Like I said, for 10 years, they was already investigating these guys. In 2019, they started the task force. In 2020, they see these guys in a video with a rapper by the name of YFN Lucci. 
um similar colors similar insignia whatever's going on they said oh man wife and lucy's blood and not it then they basically started investigating that situation eventually in the indictment they basically say that the bloods that they were investigating in Atlanta were mainly centered around YF and Lucci. He was the leader, one of the leaders, something like that. That's how they trying to put it in the indictment. They also don't bring up his rap career at all, which is something that YF and Lucci lawyer um, has stated numerous times. The state of, we gonna put it up, but the state of Georgia believed that the YFN studio located on West Peachtree in Atlanta was the central point for the group and a notorious stronghold. Uh, they believed that the group YFN had continued to attract additional associates as Bennett gained notoriety. So basically, like, as YFN Lucci got bigger, him, you know, all of the stuff being centered around him, as he got bigger, the game got bigger. And they were watching it happen, which, again, seems a little, you know, you've been watching these dudes for 10 years, you see him in a music video with a guy, and now you see them hanging out at the studio. You, that, that's not, you know, that's not a gang. That's a rapper and people with the rapper. That's, but you know, that's that's for the state of Georgia. You know, they have their opinions about um, how they believe the gang became centered around YF and Lucci, and a lot of what they're doing. And when you look at the indictment, and when you look at the press releases, a lot of what they're doing is trying to connect rapper yfn luigi to this gang set to the rising violence in atlanta like they're trying to connect them three things it's a blood set so of course they get to say the bloods and that gets a lot of attention it's a famous rapper which they know he's a famous rapper but they leave it out so one thing i noticed too like when looking into these rappers man the government knows who these people are so when i search uh push icy the shit the government press releases say Pooh Shiesty did this or Pooh Shiesty said this. In this case, uh, the Georgia Bureau of Investigations have conveniently left out the fact that YFN Lucci is like a three times platinum rapper. They make it seem like he's more of an underground rapper. And as he was building up his, uh, you know, notoriety, they say the gang was getting bigger. So they believe that he was funding his rap career with these gang proceeds, which don't make sense because dude already has sold over three million records. One of the things that was, it piqued my interest when when looking into the whole case was that they bring up uh bloods in miami um and i believe that's another attempted tie-in to yfn lucci um closely after the shooting and the murder uh you know the two two of yfn lucci's co-defendants in the murder case fleed the state of georgia they were eventually caught in miami i think that they're trying to connect people in Miami to Atlanta that makes the gang look bigger it makes it look like there was an attempt to cover up this crime and they're saying that YFN Lucci was the connection between the guys in Atlanta and the guys in Miami they're really trying to use YFN Lucci for this case like he's not the main guy that they're targeting but because of his notoriety because of the studio on Peachtree because he was may have been allegedly able to help people flee the state to Miami they're trying to connect all this stuff and say, look, look, man, this dude is the leader of the gang. And, you know, uh, he's a he's he's guilty of racketeering, which is a big ass case for Georgia. Like, that's a odd case. In March of 2022, it was reported that YFN Lucci um, was requesting the judge to get a bond. Um, he was fearing for his life in jail. He had PC'd out. And it was because of a fight that had turned into a stabbing. Um, YF and Lucci and his lawyers claimed that he was stabbed during like a jail fight. Um, and as a result of the altercation, he no longer, you know, felt safe in the environment. He PC'd out. He went into protective custody. When I heard that, I definitely knew that, you know, YF and Lucci is not the gang leader that they're talking about. Um... Not to say, you know, I don't know what was going on with the fight. I can't really talk about the fight particularly. But what I can say is that when you PC out, man, that's really like protective custody. That's for like, you know, I guess certain celebrities PC out, but a lot of them do general population. Um, That's for snitches. That's for people who really feel like somebody trying to kill him. And he did tell the judge, hey, look, I need a bond. I'm gonna have to PC out somebody trying to kill me. That don't really sound like 
what a uh, proposed blood gang leader of Atlanta would, would, would say. You know, he would still fight his case. So, you know, he would go through the procedures or whatever. But I don't think he would have that type of situation in jail if he was who, you know, the state of Georgia say he is. The state of Georgia uh, just started this new task force. They need a poster child case. The Bloods gang, a popular rapper. We could tie it all together. Miami murder. They could turn it, wrap it up into a story. If they're able to secure that big Rico case, you know, that gives them funds. That gives them prestige. They will be one of the first states to actively pursue Rico cases on a state level. Like, that's still a very odd case to catch on a state level. Most Rico cases come directly from the FBI, from the feds. You know what I'm saying? They don't come from the State Bureau of Investigations. So this will really be like a... um like a like a linchpin or like a, a an important case for all future cases coming up so you know if they can link this rapper with a music video and a shaky eyewitness if you could link this rapper to this gang and prosecute them all you know that bodes well for going forward prosecuting more rappers with more supposed street ties um we really believe that's what's going on here at street certified news like i said um, we don't condone anybody murdering nobody. We don't condone people hurting society. But at the same time, um, you know, the state and the government tend to put stories on people that they want you to believe. So in researching the case, it looks like through loose association, through maybe one. I mean, um, the dude that shot hundreds of music videos, they found one video that they said, oh, look, there go the rag. There go the guy. So to, to link him with one music video to make him seem like, you know, he was in need of this criminal activity when dude was a multi-platinum producing rapper, uh, it, it don't make sense to me. Um, not to say that people in the music industry aren't sometimes around people that's not and that's doing other things, but because of what you're doing, that don't mean that's what I'm doing. You see what I'm saying? So again, hey, we ain't trying to make this video too long, man. Man, hopefully YFN Lucci gets a fair shake at trial gets a fair shake hopefully his lawyer have picked up on some of the things we picked up but man free wife and lucci you know what i'm saying r.i.p uh james adams uh man ho ho hopefully everybody in the situation finds a better situation on the other side it's your boy emrick show guapo man street certified news we out